All right, welcome folks to our second lecture of Unit 5, and today we'll be taking a look at atomic structure. But before we get into what we'll discuss today, let's do a quick review here. And we know that the model of the atom has evolved from a very simple structure to something more complex, starting off with the Dalton model, which was a solid sphere with a predictable mass. And we know that when those, mat when those atoms combine in compounds. They combined in whole number ratios. Moving on to the Thomson model, otherwise known as the plum pudding model, we called it the blueberry muffin model, and this was the first evidence that we have particles that are smaller than that of atoms, and these were negatively charged blueberries or negatively charged particles that were interdispersed throughout the atom. Rutherford kind of turned the tables a little bit and said that now instead of being a solid sphere, that the atom was mostly empty space, and where those electrons Electrons were found in that empty space, but it had a densely packed nucleus in the middle. The Bohr model was our planetary model. Now those electrons that are outside the nucleus move about in fixed orbits like planets orbiting the sun, and there are different energy levels at which those electrons could fly around in. And our last model that we looked at, and this is the model that we use today, is the Schrodinger model, which is also referred to as the electron cloud model, which instead of having fixed orbits, like Bohr said, Schrodinger said that they, we had probable locations of electrons where we could find the electrons, and that we base them on probability. And the more dense those electron clouds were, the greater the chance we would have to find the electron. So that's what we looked at in our last lecture. And if you need a little bit of a review, take some time and go back if you can. But from here, we're going to move on and talk about subatomic particles. Now, we know atoms are made up of three subatomic particles, which again, when we look at the name atom, it means indivisible. But talking about some of these subatomic particles, the first one that we come up with is probably the most important. That is the proton. And the proton was established by Rutherford. And protons are found in the nucleus of the atom. And each proton contributes a charge of 1 plus, or we can also look at it as plus 1, to the overall charge of the atom. Now, a proton has a mass of what we refer to as 1 AMU, or atomic mass unit. And that's an arbitrary unit that's used based on the carbon-12 atom. And if we want to kind of really look at what that mass is, it's approximately about 1.674 times 10 to the tw negative 24th gram. So we're talking about very, very small particles all right, that contained in the nucleus. And the second particle that we have in that nucleus is the neutron. And this was established by another man named James Chadwick in 1932. All right, it also has a mass of about 1 AMU. And as you can see there, it's slightly, slightly larger, or has more mass than that of the proton. It's also found in the nucleus. But in the neutron, it does not have a charge. It has a zero charge, or what we refer to as a neutral charge. Now, if you remember back to your notes from earlier, that most of the mass of the atom is located in the nucleus. So essentially, we can look at the proton and the neutron contributing most of the mass of the atom. About 99.97% of that mass is in the nucleus. So that means most of the mass of the atom is protons and neutrons. And the reason that is, is in our third subatomic particle, which we look at as being the electron, is a very small particle compared to that of a proton and a neutron. It has a mass approximately a little less than 1 2,000th of an AMU. So as far as its mass goes, it's negligible in contributing mass to the overall mass of the atom. But what's important here about the electron, and as you can see some of the information about that, is it contributes a charge of negative one. So for every electron that we have in the atom, it has a negative one charge, like the protons have a positive one charge. But unlike protons and neutrons, electrons are not found in the nucleus. They are located around the nucleus 
in that electron cloud. And again, these particles were first detected by Thompson and his cathode ray tube and later named electrons. And the word electron comes from the Greek word standing for meaning amber. So those are what we refer to as our subatomic particles. Now, moving on here. Oh, it's that time of our notes and that's our brain break time. So why don't we get up? Why don't we stretch a little bit? Maybe we'll run a marathon to get our blood flowing. But today's Chuck Norris fact of the day. Chuck Norris beat Halo 1, 2, and 3 on Legendary with a broken Guitar Hero controller. I hope you video game fanatics out there enjoy that. So, going back to our atomic structure here. Before we do so, I would ask that you please get out your periodic table that was provided to you in the module 5.2 packet because there's some things that I'm going to be referring to in there to help us establish what our structure is going to be. So, first let's start off here is when we look at the modern periodic table, it's arranged by something we call atomic number. And if you look on your periodic table, each element has its own atomic number. Now, on your periodic table, and I'm going to come back to this here in a moment, you're going to see that atomic number being in the upper right-hand corner of each of those boxes. And you'll notice that every element has its own atomic number. So I'm going to circle our atomic number here for oxygen and we see that it has an atomic number of 8. And that atomic number is unique for every single element. So if we were to go back and look at the elements that we have on that periodic table, we would see that it is the address of the element. So I know that when I have an atomic number of 8, it's always going to be oxygen. If I have an atomic number of 6, it's always going to be carbon. If I have an atomic number of 1, it's always going to be hydrogen. But as far as our structure goes, the atomic number also equals the number of protons in the atom of that element. So essentially, it's the identity of the element. If we change the number of protons, we change the element. So going back to our example here, if we look at oxygen, we see that it has an atomic number of 8. So right away, that tells us that oxygen has 8 protons in its structure, in the nucleus of an oxygen atom. So for any element, we know that whatever its atomic number is, whatever its address is, we can consider that being the amount of protons that are in that element. Now, as far as we know so far, because protons have a positive charge and every proton contributes a positive one charge to the atom, the number of electrons is going to equal the number of protons. So the negative charges balances out the positive charges and we get what's called a neutral atom. So going back to our oxygen example here, all right, we already know from before that oxygen has eight protons and I'm going to write it as top proton as eight P plus, all right? And because this is a neutral atom, because we want the positive and negative charges to balance out, we're also going to say that it has eight electrons. And that goes for any element that has a neutral atom. The number of electrons is going to equal the number of protons. Now, going back to our last particle, which is the neutrons. Now, remember that most of the mass of the atom is located in the nucleus. And we know that protons and elect or I'm sorry, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Well, the way we determine the mass of the number of neutrons is by something called the mass number. Now, when you look on your periodic table, you're going to see the atomic mass, which is at the bottom of the box. It'll be underneath the name or underneath the symbol. And that is the, what we refer to as the average atomic mass. In a later lecture, we'll talk about how to find average atomic mass. But to find the mass number from at uh, atomic mass or average atomic mass is we round it to the nearest whole number. And once we do that, we then subtract the atomic number from that mass number to give me the number of neutrons because the mass number is essentially the sum 
of the protons and the neutrons. So going back to our example here, all right, we already know that oxygen has eight protons and we're going to write that as 8p plus. We know that it has 8 electrons, which we'll write as 8e negative. Now I can see here my average atomic mass is 15.99. Now depending on the periodic table you look at, that might vary by a small amount. I think yours says 16.00. But we can look at this as having a mass number of 16. And remember folks, that 16 is a sum of the protons plus the neutrons. And we already know that oxygen has eight protons. So the way I'm going to find the number of neutrons is I'm going to take my mass number here, which is 16, and I'm going to subtract the atomic number, which is the number of protons, which is eight. And that's going to give me eight, which means that gives me the number of neutrons being eight. So we would say that oxygen in this case has eight protons, eight electrons, and eight neutrons. Now in this particular example, all of them are the same. Not every single exam not every single element is going to be the same. In fact, as you get heavier elements, that is where it's going to change a whole lot. But that's really how you find the structure of any neutral atom is by looking at the information that you have there on the periodic table. So let's just summarize what those things are. So up in the upper left hand corner you have your atomic number, the address of the element, that gives us the number of protons. We have our element symbol and our element name that are listed there which you will have reference to in your periodic table and the number that you see in the upper right hand corner here that is our average atomic mass which we use to round to the nearest whole number so that we can get the mass number which is a sum of the protons and neutrons and again we know that the protons and the electrons will be equal to one another we know that we can find neutrons by taking the mass number and from there subtracting the number of protons or the atomic number. So that's basically our lecture here on atomic structure in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please ask. And take a look at some of the videos and web links to help further your knowledge about what this atomic structure is.